Hello, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about point slope form. So this is the third equation of a line that we have learned thus far. So this is another very important equation to be familiar with because as opposed to slope intercept form, which let's review, slope intercept form tells you the slope and the y-intercept of a line. And that gives you a pretty good picture of what the line is going to look like before you even graph it. However, what if we want to focus on a point other than the y-intercept? Keep in mind, the y-intercept is a very particular point. It's a point that exists on the y-axis. So what if you wanted to find the equation of a line that crosses through a point other than the y-axis, how would you do that? Well, this is the beauty of point-slope form. The reason this equation is called point-slope form is because just by looking at the formula, you can identify the known point. So the point in this case is has the coordinates x sub 1, and y sub 1, and the slope of the line will be m. It's the same value as in slope-intercept form. So this equation is actually very beneficial when you are writing equations of lines. This is useful because if you know any point, it could be the y-intercept or any other point, and if you know the slope of the line, you can then immediately write the equation of this line just by inputting these known values into the equation. So let's take a look at this example. A line passes through the point 2, 3 and has a slope of 1 half. Write its equation in point slope form. So let's try to visualize what this would look like. So we know that this line is going to pass through the point 2, 3. So if we were to plot that point, this would be right here. Notice that point has the x value of 2 and the y value of 3. Now the slope is 1 half, so that means to find the next point, we have to rise 1 and run 2. So that puts us right there. Remember, we rise 1 and we run 2 units. So that gives us our slope, and that gives us our two points. And with that, you can draw your line. So what equation would represent this line? Well, because we know a point, we know a point, and because we know the slope, we can input this into point-slope form. It's in the name point slope form. If you know a point and you know the slope, you can write the equation in point slope form. So notice, we know that the slope is one half. So that value can be put right here. Now, because we know the point, the x value, this we could call is x1, and this we could call is y1. So we know that the x value is 2, so that goes right there. And we know that the known y value is 3. So all we have to do is basically plug in or input those values into the equation. And we get y minus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 2. And this is the equation of this line in point slope form. As you can see, this is a very convenient equation because you can write this equation very quickly without much thought. Now, let's take a look at this example. It's a very similar concept. A line passes through the point negative 5, 1 and has a slope of negative 3. So we can write it, the equation of this line in point-slope form. Because we know the point, so the x value of this known point is x1, which is negative 5, and the known y value, which we call y sub 1, is 1. And we know that the slope is negative 3. 
So therefore, because we know a point and we know the slope, we can write the equation in point slope form. So we do y minus the known y value, which is 1, equals the slope, which we know is negative 3, times x minus the known x value, which is negative 5. However, we need to simplify this because notice when you subtract a negative, that's actually a plus. So this equation would actually be y minus 1 equals negative 3 times x plus 5. So this is the actual equation of the line. Notice the slope is negative 3. The value of x that the line passes through is negative 5. So even though the equation says x plus 5, you should be subtracting. So that just means that the value of x is negative, which turns it into a positive, as you can see up above. And the y value is 1. Okay, so given the point and the slope of a line, write the equation of the line in point-slope form. Here you have two examples. You're given the point and the slope for each example. So pause this video and write the equation of each of these lines in point-slope form. Once you have found the answer, you may unpause this video to see the answers. And there you have it. Notice again, the reason we are adding in these cases is because the values of x and y are negative in this situation. So recalling the equation, you need to subtract the x and y values. So if those are negative, subtracting a negative turns it into a plus. Now let's take a look at this situation. This is the trickier one because it actually requires an extra step of work, but it's not too complicated. We just have to remember a very, very, very important concept. So a line passes through the points 1, 2, and 3, 4. So we want to write the equation of this line in point-slope form. So of course, one way you could always do this is to graph it. If you really want to see it visually, you can. So notice right here we have the point 1, 2, and here we have the point 3, 4. So if you have two points, you can draw the line. You just connect the two lines, and you just keep it going. Well, in order to write the equation of a line in point-slope form, you need to know two things. You need to know the point and you need to know the slope. So the point is not the problem here. We have two points, actually. The problem is we don't have the slope. So this is a very important rule you need to know. If you know two points, you can find the slope between them because that's what slope is. Slope is, as we've seen in the past, the rate of change between two points. So you need to find what is the change in y and what is the change in x between two points on a line. And this will always give you the slope. So if you know two points that a line passes through, you can calculate its slope. So in this situation, because we have two points, I mean, you can count it graphically. You see, we go up two and right two. And that would give us a slope of two over two, which is one. But using the formula, let's prove that we're going to get the same slope. So if we call this y2 and this y1 and this x sub 1 and this x sub 2, we would get the y of the second point is 4 minus the y of the first point is 2. The x of the second point is 3 and the x of the first point is 1. So notice we get a rise of 2 and a run of 2, just like we did in the graph. But with the formula, you don't have to graph it. You can figure it out mathematically, and that gives us a slope of 1. So to finally write this in point-slope form, we now know the slope, and we know 
a point. We actually know two points, so there's two possible answers. You can either say y minus 2 equals the slope 1 times x minus 1. Notice this used the first point. Or you could say y minus 4 equals the slope 1 times x minus 3. And this is using the second point. So you don't have to give both, but these are both the correct equation for this because we do know the slope and we know a point that the line crosses through. So because we have two points, we could write two different equations. They're both the same. They look different because I use different numbers, but they both represent different points on the same line. So both these equations are technically the same line. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. A line passes through the points negative 1, 2, and 3, 4. We can now write the equation of this line in point-slope form. So again, as the equation states, we want to write it in point-slope form. In order to write the equation of a line, we need to know the point and the slope. Now, you could see I'm not giving you the slope, but... By giving you two points, you can calculate the slope. So first things first, we have to write. So first things first, we need to find the slope. Because if we're going to write it in point slope form, we need to know the slope. So let's call this the first point. So this is x1, y1. And let's call this the second point, x2, y2. So to find the change in y, or the rise, we get the second y minus the first y. And to find the run, or the change in x, we do x2 minus x1. Now, do remember, subtracting a negative turns this into an addition. So we're going to get negative 6 divided by 4, which simplifies... 2, negative 3 over 2. So this is our slope. Again, make sure to always simplify your slopes. So negative 6 fourth is technically correct, but that's not a simplified fraction. So you can divide the numerator and denominator by 2, which is the greatest common factor you could divide out of both of them and you get negative 3 halves. So now that we know the slope and we know a point, in fact, we know two points, we can write the equation of this line in two different ways. Both are correct. So we can, using the first point, we could say y minus the x. So using the first point, we could say y minus the y value of the first point, which is 2, equals the slope, which is negative 3 halves, times x minus the x value, which is negative 1. But remember, subtracting a negative becomes a plus. So that's one of the solutions. Or you could also use the second point, because it's also a point that goes through the same line. So we could say y minus the y value, which is negative 4, or we can make that a plus, equals the slope times x minus the x value, which is 3. So you only have to give 1, but this is just to show you, because we know two points on the same line and we know the slope of that line, both of these are valid equations of the line in point-slope form. Okay, so this problem you can now do on your own. So pause this video and write the equation of the line in point-slope form that passes through the points negative 3, 1 and 1, 7. I'll give you a hint. Remember, in order to write the equation in point-slope form, you must know the point and you must know the slope. And you have enough information to find both of those. So pause this video. 
write the equation of the line, and when you unpause the video, you will see the answer. And there you have it. First of all, we calculate the slope, which if you calculated that correctly, should be 2. Now, you can either give this answer or this answer. They're both correct. The first equation utilized the first point. The second equation utilized the second point. They both represent the exact same line. So, if you have the equation of a line in point slope form, you can actually turn it into slope intercept form. It's actually a very simple process. Both point slope form and slope intercept form are two different ways of expressing a line. So both equations represent lines. And notice that they have some similarities. But notice the beauty of slope intercept form is it's actually very simple and the y is actually isolated. So in order to write any linear equation in slope-intercept form, really all you have to do is solve for y. But notice that in slope-intercept form, there's no parentheses. So the first thing you're going to have to do is do that multiplication and distribute the slope in order to remove those parentheses. Then you could remove this value to solve for y. So to show you in steps, first step is distribute the slope. And then the last step is to isolate the y. So here's an example. I have y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 1 in point slope form. Now, I want to write this exact same equation in slope-intercept form. So all I have to do here is first, I need to remove the parentheses because, again, in slope-intercept form, there are no parentheses. So we can distribute that 3. We can distribute the slope. So we get y minus 5 equals 3x minus 3. Now, we're very close to slope-intercept form. The only thing we need to do now is remove that subtraction by 5. So to remove a subtraction, we add by 5. And we can combine our like terms now, and we're left with y equals 3x plus 2. And this is that equation in slope-intercept form. So these equations represent the exact same line, just one of them is written in point-slope form, the other one is in slope-intercept form. To prove the point, I'm going to plot both lines on a graphing calculator. So notice y minus 5 equals 3x minus 1 is plot here. Notice here it passes through the line 1, 5. As you could see, that point is right here. We could see this passes through the point 1, 5. And it has a slope of 3, because you would have to go up 3 and write 1 in order to get to the next point. Now, if I were to write the equation in slope-intercept form, y equals 3x plus 2, notice it is the exact same line. But now we can clearly see that the y-intercept is 2, but these here are the exact same lines. As you can see, they are they represent the exact same line. They're just written in two different ways. So here's an interesting problem. We have a line that passes through the points 1, 3, and 4, negative 3. Now, I want to express this equation in slope-intercept form. Now, the problem here is I'm not given the y-intercept. So writing this in slope-intercept form, at first glance, may seem impossible to do. However, you can always turn point-slope form into slope-intercept form. So if we find the equation of this line in point-slope form, which remember, we can calculate the slope first. That's the change in y over the change in x which is negative 6 over 3, or negative 2. 
now that we have the slope and we have two points to pick from, we have two possible equations. We can get y minus 3 equals negative 2 times x minus 1, or we can say y plus 3 equals negative 2 times x minus 4. All right, each of these using the different point. Now, this is in point-slope form, but we're asked to write this equation in slope-intercept form. So all you have to do now is solve for y. So I'm going to prove now that both of these equations, even though they look different in point-slope form, they represent the exact same line. So first step here is to distribute the negative 2. That becomes a plus 2 because we multiplied negative 2 times negative 1. And the last step is to remove the subtraction by 3, so we will add 3 both sides. And we get y equals negative 2x plus 5. And there we have the equation of this line in slope-intercept form. Now, what happens if we did the same thing to the other equation using the other point for negative 3? So same process. Let's distribute the negative 2. Again, that becomes a plus 8 because we did negative 2 times negative 4. And now we subtract 3 on both sides. So we get y equals negative 2x plus 5. Notice it's the exact same equation. So even though in point-slope form they look different, they're technically the same line because even though the equations look different in point-slope form, that's only because you pick different points. But they're both points on the same line. And just to clarify, you don't have to do this twice. This is just to prove that writing either equation in point-slope form will give you the correct answer in slope-intercept form. So let's say we have a line that passes through the points negative 6, 4, and has a slope of 1 half. So we want to write the equation of this line in slope-intercept form. Now the problem is we don't know the y-intercept. We do know a point, though. So the beauty of point-slope form is if you know any point and the slope, you can immediately write it in point-slope form. But from there, if you solve for y, you'll turn it into slope-intercept form. So, given our point and slope, we can write point-slope form first. So we could say y minus 4 equals 1 half, which is a slope, times x plus 6. Again, x plus 6 because this value of x is negative, and subtracting a negative makes a plus. Now, this is point-slope form. This is not answering the question. The answer is slope-intercept form. But the beauty here is all we have to do is rewrite point-slope form into slope-intercept form. So the first step is to distribute the slope. So we'll get 1 half times x plus 3. And then we can add 4 on both sides to remove that subtraction. That cancels out. And we get 1 half x plus 7. And this is the equation of our line in slope-intercept form. Again, slope-intercept form, you really could only write it if you already know the y-intercept. If you don't know the y-intercept, but you do know any other point, you can always start with point-slope form and then rewrite point-slope form into slope-intercept form. So, pause this video and write these equations which are given to us in point-slope form and turn them into slope-intercept form. When you have found the answers, unpause this video so that you may see the answers. And there you have it. These are the solutions. So remember, you need to distribute the slope and then you could get rid of that constant. Distribute the slope, and then get rid of that constant. If you follow that step, you will write an equation that's in point-slope form in slope-intercept form. 
The final concept for this lesson is graphing a line if you're given the equation in point-slope form. So you have two methods here. The first method is to observe point-slope form and use it to identify the point and the slope. So we'll call this method one, which is just to use point-slope form and identify the point and the slope. So kind of thinking in reverse, the point here, remember, we need to plug in the x value and the y value. So if we remember the equation in point-slope form, we can see here that the x value is 2 and the y value is 3. So that's our point. And our slope, which is m, is 2. So once you know the point and the slope, that's really all you need to graph a line. So since we know the point is 2, 3, we can plot that point right there. And we know that the slope is 2, so to get to any other point, Remember, slope should always be expressed as a fraction, so we can turn 2 into 2 over 1. So we now know that the rise is 2 and the run is 1. So to get to the next point, we rise 2, 1, 2, and we run 1. So that gives us that point. You could continue the pattern, and you could also go backwards as well if you prefer. And then you just connect your points. And there you go. That's how you would graph the equation of this line. Now, method two, which is fine to do as well, is to actually just convert the equation of this line into slope-intercept form. This method is useful if you do feel more comfortable graphing in slope-intercept form. And as I mentioned in the last video on slope-intercept form, um, I did explain that slope-intercept form is the easiest one to graph with. So this is another option you may use. It's an extra step of work, but if you feel more comfortable with it, then go right ahead. So to write an equation from point-slope form to slope-intercept form, we first have to distribute the slope. And then remove that constant. So we want to add 3 on both sides, and we get y equals 2x minus 1. And that's the equation in slope-intercept form. Now notice I left the original drawing up because you're going to see we get the exact same line. So as we see here, the y-intercept would be negative 1, and the slope just as before was 2 or as a fraction 2 over 1. So if we plot our y-intercept here at negative 1, and then we find the next point by following the slope, we go up to right 1, we get this point. And notice if I draw this line, we get the exact same graph. So this is just to prove that both methods are good to use. You pick whichever one you prefer. In my opinion, I think it's easier to do method one and just identify the, the point and slope from point-slope form and just graph that real quick. But if you really want to write it in slope-intercept form, you can take that extra step if you find that easier to do. Using method one, because that's the faster way to do this. So by looking at the graph in point-slope form, I can identify that the point will be 6, negative 4. Now you may be wondering, where is the negative coming from, the negative 4? Well, remember, if we compare this to point-slope form, notice again the x value is 6. Now the y value, notice we need to be subtracting. But remember, 
adding, as we saw in the past, is like saying y minus negative 4. So now you could see here that the y value is negative 4. Because it should be subtracting. If, if the equation in point slope form shows an addition, that's only because you're subtracting a negative number. So that's why the point is 6, negative 4. And as we can see here, the slope is negative 1 half. So, first things first, we plot our point 6, negative 4, which would be right around here. Notice the x value is 6 and the y value is negative 4. And then the slope is negative 1 half. So, that means because the slope is negative, we have to go down. So, we go down 1, right 2. So, notice we went down 1, right 2. So we could connect these dots, and we get the graph of this line. If you want to do the second method by rewriting this equation in slope-intercept form, go ahead and do that, and you're going to see that you get the exact same line. So to wrap up this video, go ahead and plot these two lines. You can use whatever method you want. At the end, you should get the exact same result. So pause this video, and once you have drawn the two graphs, unpause this video so that you may see the answers. And there you have it. The graph in red represents the line A, and the graph in green represents equation B. Now notice, for A, if you did choose to write it in slope-intercept form, you would have seen that the y-intercept was 7. And as you see, if you drew the line correctly, you get a line that passes through the, the y-intercept at 7. And for line B, if you wrote that in slope-intercept form, you would have seen that it had a y-intercept of negative 1. So if you drew this given the point in point-slope form, you would see that that line eventually crosses through the y-axis at negative 1. So either method is fine. It's up to you. But as long as you have a point and the slope, it doesn't matter if the point is the y-intercept or if the point is any other point. If you know a point and the slope, you can draw the line. So that wraps up this video. See you in the next one. Bye.